Charlotte Colvin, Dr. Charlotte Colvin. Um, she's the senior TB advisor at uh, USAID, and she's going to finish with some uh, personal insights. You, AID, of course, is an extremely important partner for many people here to the foundation, multiple programs and projects around the world. Uh, Charlotte's a global health professional, more than 20 years experience with program implementation, monitoring and evaluation. Um, she works at AID, USAID in the Office of Infectious Disease within the Bureau of Global Health for the past 10 years. Uh, and she's had extensive international experience uh, and has a particular expertise in tuberculosis, interested in pediatric TB diagnostics and so on. Um, and she um, also provides technical assistance in a number of countries, including Zambia and Mozambique. So she comes with technical uh, intellectual as well as program experience. So Charlotte, please, you're very welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. DeCock, for your kind introduction. And thank you all for being here. Thank you so much to the Mario Foundation for hosting this event and for GW for providing such a wonderful space for us to be in. Um, so th the symposium is happening at a really important time um, because we are less than a week out from the high level meeting um, that took place in New York last Friday. And um, there's a lot of energy and momentum, I think, coming out of that meeting. I'm, I'm usually a little cynical about UN meetings, but I do feel like there's some important commitments that were made. And I think a, a number of important announcements, and I think it's gonna help us build some more energy ar around TB. Um, USAID launched our new TB strategy for the period 2023 to, through 2030 in April. Um, and the stated mission is to provide high quality TB technical and development assistance to, through programs founded on principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and implemented in partnership with affected individuals and communities. And we've organized the, the strategy and our implementation plan under five pillars of uh, reach, cure, prevent, innovate, and sustain. So a lot of our work really focuses on those buckets. Um, and in terms of implementation, uh, we work uh, directly with national TV programs, with our missions and partners in um, uh, 24 countries across the world. And one of the commitments that we made last week at the HLM was to increase the amount of our funding that goes directly to local partners um, like the, the Jeskios and the, um, some of the partners that Dr. Banu mentioned to 60% of our portfolio. Um, so really trying to uh, give the funding directly to local partners to do a lot of these community level interventions, a lot of the research, a lot of the, um, the implementation of these different interventions that you've been hearing about today. Um, as part of the strategy where our high level outcomes are to really detect, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with PEPFAR, you've heard of 90-90-90, and in the TB world, we have our own 90-90-90, which is to detect 90% of incident TB cases and initiate them on treatment, 90% of incident drug-resistant TB cases initiated on treatment, um, achieve a 90% success rate for both forms of, of TB, and then to provide TB preventive therapy for 30 million people, and again, and this is in the countries where USAID is supporting um, supporting national TB programs. So to all of today's presentations and discussions on unmet need, unmet need have really helped us identify um, as a community and, and particularly USAID as a donor where we need to be focusing our efforts as we consider what's, what's needed to achieve a TB free world. Um, I'll just point out three particular gaps that, that the agency I work for is interested in. I mean, we, we cover a broad range of interventions, but we do have um, some areas where we have a high concentration of focus. Um, one of those is increasing access to molecular WHO recommended diagnostic testing. Uh, we see that as a big challenge in the countries where we support TB programming. Um, as, as Jacob pointed out, we've had expert, we've had some of these tools now for more than 10 years, but we haven't really optimized the use, use of them and we, we can do better. And as more tools come along, we need to have laid the groundwork for introducing them. And we, and we work in partnership with the Stop TV partnership in several countries to do that. 
Um, we also really see huge gaps in case finding of drug resistant TB among adults and children. And again, some of this is a, a matter of making better use of the tools we have and also um, broadly strengthening diagnostic networks. I've had several NTP managers say to me, it's great that you have all these tools, but when you just throw them at a diagnostic network that's not functioning, um, they, they don't end up being very helpful. So we, we need to be looking not at just the tools themselves, but the larger context that they're, that they're implemented in. Um, and then finally, drug sensitivity testing, I think is a really important area where we need to focus, especially for these new drugs. Some of the regimens that Dr. Horsberg was mentioning, they're very exciting. We, um, we're playing a, a role in really helping uh, introduce and scale up some of these regimens in countries, but we're also, as, as we should be concerned, that we don't wanna see drug resistant. And we, with more regimens, we need to have better drug sensitivity testing so that we can make sure patients are put on the right regimen. So that's just a, example of three things that, that we see as kind of important priorities. Um, full disclosure, um, I do cover pediatric TB for our team, so I'm very happy that so much of today's um, focus was on uh, doing a better job of, of detecting childhood TB. Um, much of USAID's investment in this area has been in supporting the rollout of stool-based testing, which we heard a lot about from Dr. Banu. And it's it's not perfect. This definitely challenges, but it has made a, a difference in a lot of places. And I, I think, you know, it's it's one step along the way of, of getting better diagnosis for kids. Um, we've been doing this that work everywhere from Ukraine, where despite the very difficult conditions there, it's been a huge difference in being able to detect uh, TB among infants, particularly infants that have drug-resistant TB. Um, and we're also working throughout East and Southern Africa, Mozambique and Zambia, where I spend a lot of my time. And then in Cambodia and Vietnam in um, Southeast Asia are two of the countries where we've been working. So um, I just wanna wrap up again by thanking everyone, um, our colleagues at, at the Mario Foundation, all of the panelists and speakers, you've given us a lot to think about. And um, again, GW for hosting this great event. Thank you so much. <laughs>